opportunity to gather together and to worship you today. We thank you as we come to the end of this Easter tide and just pray that we may prepare, be prepared to go out and serve you well as we enter the season of Pentecost. I pray that the words that I speak may not be mine, but they may be yours, that are edifying and glorifying to you. Amen. We are at the end of the Easter season. And also, as I told the kids, there's other things that we're at the end of as well. Yesterday marked almost the very end of the track season for our girls for that past high. They got second place at South State with some hope that they could win the state tournament. <coughs> and it is the end of the school year as well. The end of the Easter season is marked by this Thursday, our service at 5 o'clock right here of the Ascension Day a service that we haven't done since 2005. So as it's appropriate that as we're up just a little bit higher, we can remember Jesus going much higher than this. We also have in two weeks the day of Pentecost, and in three weeks we have Trinity Sunday and the Bishop's visits. And many who have gone through the confirmation class will get that final exam questions from the Bishop for them for them to be received and to be confirmed. But we see in this passage in John, this is what is known as the farewell discourse of Jesus to his disciples. And some people find this very strange because it happens in chapter 14. Shouldn't the farewell discourse be way up forward, closer to chapter 16 or 18? But Jesus is preparing them as part of what this passage is. Preparing them for what's going to happen after he is gone and for how he's going to lead them. Because he's been with them for almost three years now. You can imagine that time in your, in your senior year getting just past the end of the first semester and being prepared for the end of the school year. That seems both at the same time so far away and yet so close to be well prepared. And that's what Jesus was doing for his disciples. He was helping them to be prepared. He said, if anyone loves me, who will obey my teaching, my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. <coughs> Jesus is telling them, there is a path towards obedience to what you have learned. And that comes through love. If you love me, then you will obey my teaching. Not, if you obey my teaching, then you will love me. It's not automatic, anyway. <coughs> We've all known many people who have tried to use the Bible as a guidebook for how to live without caring for Jesus. Looking at the rules and saying, well, how, what does this mean for how I should interact with people? What do I need to do? See, the thing is, is, if you go through obedience without love, Jesus is simply a cruel taskmaster. It is obedience because of love. We love and so we will obey. Because if we don't love him, we look at the rules, everything that he has taught his disciples and he has taught us, we'll come up to something and say, oh, I don't feel like doing that thing today. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like helping people. I don't feel like proclaiming the word. So I'll just do as much as I think I need to. Or I will obey because I am afraid. No, instead, it's through love. Now there are those who, who start in that sort of obedience through fear, through a desire that doesn't come out of love that that can be turned. But the full obedience doesn't occur until we love Jesus. Because that is the sort of response that is needed to be able to give a full obedience. Because the fact of the matter is, is if we don't love God more than ourselves, there's so many things He asks of us that just doesn't make sense to us. So many things that will put us second or third or fourth or fifth and that's not something many of us would want to do if we don't love Jesus. This is something I need to remember as I raise Eric, raise him up 
over the next rest of his life that I will love him and I will care for him and every rule that I set for him is not to be mean to him. It's not to make his life terrible even at a time he might say it is. It's because I love him. And all the teachings that Jesus gave his disciples and he gives to us because he loves us as well. And because we know that he loves us and because we love him, that's why we obey. He does not love me, will not obey my teaching. It's just, it's not possible to follow it completely. And the thing that Jesus is saying here too is, these works of are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. He said, it's not something that I made up, disciples of mine. It's not something I made up on the fly just to make your life miserable. It's something that the Father had given me. But together, we have this command for you. 